The United States Navy and baseball are two of this country's greatest institutions. In this episode of Battle Stars, in celebration of Navy Day and the start of this year's World Series, both on October 27th, we doff our caps to the memory of the Van Meter Heater, Rapid Robert Bob Feller, star pitcher for the Cleveland Indians. When Japan attacked the United States at Pearl Harbor, he declined a draft exemption and forfeited a six-figure contract to join the Navy. Feller was driving from his home in Van Meter, Iowa to Chicago to discuss his 1942 contract with the general manager of the Cleveland Indians when he heard on the radio that the Japanese had bombed Pearl Harbor. I was angry as hell, he said. Only 23 years old, he had left the farm at 17, skipped the minor leagues, and already spent almost six full seasons in the majors. He held a family-related draft exemption because his father had terminal cancer but right then and there he decided to enlist. I had planned on joining the Navy as soon as the war broke out. Everybody knew that we were going to get in it sooner or later, and that was the day, he said. He called his friend Gene Tunney, the former world heavyweight boxing champion. As Commander Tunney, the champ ran the Navy's physical training program. He flew to Chicago to swear Feller into the Navy personally on Tuesday, December 9th. Feller's act of patriotism was great publicity for the Navy and the military generally. Feller wasn't alone. Though the U.S. Navy had been unofficially at war, fighting German submarines, remember Pearl Harbor, mobilized an entire nation unlike any event in American history. In the finest tradition of the citizen soldier, tens of thousands of draft-exempt men volunteered to serve, while hundreds of thousands more didn't wait to be drafted and joined immediately. For example, by Christmas, the five Sullivan brothers, fellow Iowans, hailing from Waterloo, had also enlisted. As Feller saw it, his country needed him. Like the Sullivans, he joined the Navy to avenge Pearl Harbor. But unlike Feller, these men weren't rich and famous. He was the first American professional athlete to volunteer. In 1942, after basic training, the Navy made Feller a chief petty officer and physical training instructor, but the light duty rankled him. Because he had learned how to fly in 1940, he volunteered for naval aviation, but his flying career ended before it started when he failed a high-frequency hearing test. Instead, he went to gunnery school and requested duty on board his home state's namesake, the battleship Iowa, then under construction. But the Navy made Feller the gun captain of a 40mm anti-aircraft mount on the new battleship Alabama. That was all right by Feller. Alabama would likely go into action before Iowa. As Feller often said, I got what I wanted. Feller was on board Alabama when in the spring of 1943, working with sister ship South Dakota, she reinforced the British home fleet to protect convoys and try to bring German battleship Tirpitz to battle. In early August, Alabama left the North Atlantic to join the fast carrier task forces in the Pacific. She first saw action in November 1943, then in the Marshall, Caroline, and Philippine Islands. Japanese aircraft kept Feller's gun crew busy, but Alabama's only casualties came when one of her 5-inch gun turret fired into another, killing five men. The beauty of Alabama was that she was big enough for Feller to throw the ball around, skip rope, and exercise regularly. Feller developed a slider while in the Pacific. Perhaps not surprisingly, Alabama's baseball team won the fleet championship. The games continued when possible, but the pace of operations kept the ship in action constantly. Finally, the great typhoon of December 1944 damaged Alabama's superstructure, and the ship returned to Puget Sound Naval Shipyard for repair, refit, and crew rotation. She would leave for the Western Pacific in April 1945, but without Bob Feller. In March, Chief Feller received orders to the Great Lakes Naval Training Station to manage its baseball team. When the Pacific War ended abruptly, he was discharged from active duty on August 21st. Three days later, on a Friday night in Cleveland, more than 46,000 fans turned out to watch Feller's return to the major leagues. He threw a complete game, beating Detroit 4-2.
Like so many millions of other men, Feller did his duty, came home, went back to work, and started a family. Feller's father had died, and he had gotten married during the same week in January 1943. Feller didn't dwell much on what he had missed, including salary, while serving in the Navy. But with the wartime talent pool so diluted, as Major League Baseball's most dominant pitcher, he might have won another 90 or even 100 games. Feller didn't disagree, believing he would have finished closer to 400 wins than 300, but always said he was only glad to get home in one piece. On opening day 1946, he threw a shutout. In his fourth start, he threw a no-hitter against the Yankees. Feller called the Great Mariana's turkey shoot and bombing attack on Alabama in June 1944 the most exciting 13 hours of his life. After that, he said, the pinstriped perils of Yankee Stadium seemed trivial. In his first full season back, Feller won 26 games and broke the American League record for strikeouts. In his career, he won 266 games, threw three no-hitters and 12 one-hitters, and led Cleveland to a world championship in 1948. He was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame in 1962, but Feller saw serving in the Navy as the defining period of his life and let people know it. He was a vocal advocate of public service until his death in 2010. So, happy Navy Day. Whether you follow the game or not, try to remember the men and women of the United States Navy and the other services, especially those at sea and far from home, all of whom have volunteered, like Bob Feller did in 1941.